Hey, what's up, nerds? Paul at Radio Free Hammer Hall. Today we are going to take a look at some math hammer on our shooting units that are available to us in Cities of Sigmar. So that's going to include in here basically everything except Ironweld Arsenal. Um, I just kind of left Ironweld Arsenal out for now. They're kind of a, a little bit of a different animal. Um, than our infantry and our sh ships from Caradron Overlords. Um, I was initially not even going to include the Caradron Overlords ships, but when I realized that typically um, they're going to have Thunderers loaded onto them, I realized that trying to kind of figure out like that compound value for point is kind of important. So I wanted to include those ships so we get a broader picture. And all of that's based on the new Caradron Overlords book. Um, I'm going to be ignoring any buffs that are going to affect any unit, like a Celestial Hurricanum or city special abilities like artifacts and command traits. Um, I am going to be including uh, some power pairs in the analysis. Um, and I'm going to be using like a common unit size that you would use when you're doing a power pair uh, and not just either the min or max. Um, all damage output is going to be calculated compared to a 4-up save on your opponent so that we have a baseline to see what the effect of rend is. Uh, and not included here, I'm also just kind of excluding the special weapons and bonuses on champions. Um, just to make the math a little bit simpler, um, you know, the, the champions are going to boost you up a little bit, uh, but not in a material way so it just makes everything a little bit easier so first up we got our free guild crossbows they're hitting on fours wounding on threes one damage each so not that impressive off the top for a hundred points uh if you uh don't move them they get double shots so they'll be doing 20 shots on fours and threes so that'll double your damage output. And then if you layer on hold the line from a free guild general, it's going to cost you an extra 100 points. I'm assuming a block of 20 crossbows, so you'll get 40 shots on threes and twos. Um, and it will cost you a command point, but that's going to give you uh, a decent lift in your damage output per point, especially considering that your free guild general has other utility you can use hold the line on up to three units um and he has some other synergies and other abilities there so he's not just uh standing there buffing one unit he's potentially buffing several free guild handgunners uh they're one attack per model so fours and threes rend one so that rend is already giving us better base damage output than our free guild crossbows. Uh, they get plus one to hit on their scroll if there's 10 or more models and they don't move. So that puts them on threes and threes, rend one. So you notice that that's giving you roughly the same damage output as double shots from the uh, free guild crossbows. The crossbows come out a little bit on top. Um, and then hold the line being applied to this, puts them on twos and twos, rend one. Um, assuming a block of 20 and the free guild general, again, costing you a command point every time you use it. Uh, boosting you up a little bit on per point. Um, the big thing here is if you're using multiple units of handgunners or multiple shooting units, multiple things that are getting hold of the line, that's where you really get your value. But if you're just running one unit of handgunners and your choice is, you know, do I run a free guild general or do I run just more handgunners? It may be better just to have more handgunners rather than uh, throwing in that free guild general. And that way you have about the same damage output per point and you are uh, not... Uh, you're not wasting a hero slot, you're not using command points, etc. Both of these are really strong choices for shooting. 
Uh, the big problem comes in with both of them that they cannot move when they get their big bonuses, uh, which is particularly a problem for your handgunners, which have a 16-inch range. Uh, although they do also have a special ability to uh, take shots in the charge phase when enemy units end a charge move within three inches of them. So that's a pretty strong ability there and makes handgunners a really appealing option for reasons beyond just their sheer damage output. So up next, Dispossessed Iron Drakes. So these guys clock in at 150 points for 10 models, 3s and 3s rend 1, so they're throwing a decent amount of damage around right off the top. If you add in a Rune Lord, you can give them an additional rend, but it should be noted that that is a prayer, and that uh, with that it's not um, it's not necessarily that reliable. So you're not always going to get that extra rend, unlike you know with hold the line you can just spend a command point. The Rune Lord is a die roll, so I believe it's a three up, so it's pretty reliable but it's still a die roll. It's still going to fail fairly often. Um, and I did not include the additional points there, but I did include it in the damage output per point calculation. And you can see that the extra buff that it gives you just from that actually decreases your points efficiency. Um, and on top of that, it's, um, it's costing you extra points and it's not reliable. It's not 100% reliable anyway. So when these guys don't move, they uh, are getting uh, double shots, which is a pretty big deal, especially uh, when you consider that you can use the Soul Scream Bridge to kind of teleport them, and it's not considered a move, so that they'll still get their double shots. Uh, same holds true for your handgunners as well. Um, that's a neat trick that you can do with either of these guys. Uh, but your damage output per point is higher on your Iron Drakes. So you definitely uh, are going to want to go Iron Drakes if you have the option to. Uh, they're going to be a little bit more expensive, but they're definitely uh, worth the extra investment. And you can see here if we add again the rune lord to that making it a unit of 20 uh, and adding in the rune lord our points efficiency actually goes down so although you're getting that extra rend uh, the rune lord is actually not really worth it um, in terms of your efficiency per point um, it still has its utility it's still a strong buff um, when you're up against things like Petrifix Elite, you really want that extra rend. Um, but in many cases, the extra rend is not going to do much for you. All right. So overall, the Iron Drakes are one of your strongest units, but they still suffer from uh, that same issue where they don't want to move. They need to stay in one place, and they don't have very long range. Uh, they're very potent when things are in range, but that their short range shooting is definitely a problem up next we got shadow warriors so these guys don't really have a power pair that goes along with them they're 10 models for 110 points hit on threes wound on fours rend one so their damage output is not super exciting off the top um they do get plus one to hit and cover and they are able to to uh, set up off the battlefield and then pop onto the board on your first turn so you can set them up directly into cover um, and that will increase their damage output per point pretty substantially by getting them onto threes and threes rend one so shadow warriors are definitely really good um, and over the weekend uh, we saw them being used to great effect at cancon uh, they're very strong, they have some flexibility, they let you do a deep strike move, um, and they're putting a hurting on some things. They're putting out decent damage. So 
they're a really interesting option here. All right, up next is your Dark Shards. Uh, they're base. They're on fours and fours with no rend. Um, but they're doing two attacks each, so their damage output is pretty solid on base. Um, and then if they have ten or more models, they're getting plus one to hit. So that increases them further and starts putting them in the same sort of league as handgunners. Um, so they are definitely quite strong. Um, with these, because it's only at 10 or more models, you're probably going to want to run them in the units of 20. But they do also have 18 inch range and they don't have a penalty for moving. So that together is actually pretty strong. Um, I definitely like Dark Shards a lot. Um, I'm a little bit surprised we don't see them more because they're, um, they are definitely very powerful, very scary. They drop a lot of damage and they're not expensive. A hundred points for 10 of them. That's, uh, pretty darn good. Up next, we have our MVP. I'm just going to tell you right now, uh, is Sisters of the Watch. So they are 160 points. So they're one of the more pricey shooting units. Um, threes and threes, no rend, one damage, uh, but every hit of a six does a mortal wound in addition to normal damage. So that's already putting them on a pretty decent amount of damage. And then if they do not move, they get double shots. So they double their... Uh, effectiveness uh, and they get even more uh, mortal wounds out of that because they're still doing their mortal wounds on hits of six so that gives us overall um, really uh, the most powerful shooting unit that we have available to us in cities of sigmar in particular i think the best use for these guys is probably in living city where you can set them up off the board in the hidden paths pop them onto the board right next to your opponent. It's a setup, not a move, so you get your double shots right away, and you can rain a tremendous amount of damage down on your opponent uh, right on their doorstep on turn one. So I think these are really good. Once again, I'm a little bit surprised that we're not seeing them. Um, I really haven't seen them hanging around anywhere. I haven't seen them popping up in lists. Uh, they're very, very powerful. Um, I know I'm going to be converting some out of free guild archers. I just need to find some uh, female head swaps to uh, make them look appropriate as sisters. And uh, yeah, I, I think these guys are really good. They're a little bit situational because th once again, they have that issue where they have to stand still, but in that standing still they don't need another power pair unit to buff them further although the, again there's things available that can make them better um but you don't necessarily need that i think they're really like an mvp in living city uh and i i would love to see this happen and uh, with the Living City Command ability, it really kind of will play like old Wood Elves, where you kind of can ambush and hit and fade and do all kinds of shenanigans and uh, keep them safe. So I really like Sisters of the Watch a lot. Um, I think they're something to watch out for. Ha, see what I did there? Um, in the future, to see uh, what's going on. But as far as damage efficiency, they're the best thing we've got, and... They're doing mortal wounds as well, which is huge. All right. Looking at Karadrin Overlords, we've got Gunstock Thunderers. They are 120 points. Um, here I did include the uh, champion bonus because it's giving you two extra attacks. Um, they are on... Uh, threes and fours. I'm sorry, I'm actually incorrect there because they'll be. Oh wait, no. Yeah, they uh, they're doing five of them are doing twelve attacks on threes and fours. 
rend one. So they're putting out a decent amount of damage. Um, they're not really all that exciting. Uh, the big thing is that you can throw them in a ship and get them into shooting range on turn one. That's really pretty big there. Sky Wardens and Endrin Riggers, these are very, very similar to each other. Uh, the big difference is your Vulcanizer pistols versus rivet guns on the th odd third guy. Um, your rivet guns on Endrin Riggers are actually a little bit better. They do more damage and they have longer range. So Endrin Riggers are oddly enough your better choice for shooting and they're also your better choice for melee. So right now there's basically no reason to run Sky Wardens. So that's an interesting little tidbit there. Um, you know, there are some power pairs available in Karadran Overlords for these guys, but there's nothing that's really, like, that exciting, and it's definitely not going to be worth the points. It's, you know, re-rolling ones to hit is definitely going to be dragging down your points efficiency. It's not going to be buffing it up. So, I have just left that off for now, because it's really not even a consideration. Uh, Kurnoth Hunters, these guys are available to us in Living City, so they're uh, units of three doing a total of six attacks on fours and threes, rend one, d3 damage. This is like your absolute worst choice. They have very poor damage output per point. The only note on that is that they're, they are better than average in melee for a shooting unit. So, that definitely is a good contributor there. Um, our Arcanaut Ironclad is up next. Um, it's got a big bunch of different options. So, just a quick note on what your best base option is. The Great Volley Cannon, believe it or not, is actually the thing that is going to give you the highest damage output. And uh, a very close second is your shrapnel shells out of your Great Sky Cannon. So both of those are good options. The flexibility of the Great Sky Cannon is actually nice as well because you can do those long-range shots as well as short-range shots. Um, then you also get Ether Shock Torpedoes and Ether Shock Carbines. And it looks like my last row got cut off here. Um, but it, it averages out to about... 0 0.22 uh, damage per point, which is not super exciting, but it's kind of like an average baseline. Um, and that is considering that this is 510 points of shooting, and it does other things, it's very durable, and it's also going to be likely housing a bunch of Thunderers, which have a uh, similar damage efficiency, so you're really going to be pushing out a lot of power out of this one thing it's going to be kind of um it, it's kind of a death star um although it doesn't have like other stuff really buffing it up but it's a pretty strong option for running in tempest's eye that said it is dumping a whole lot of points into shooting and that might be a little bit of a dubious idea you might have some other issues that crop up because of that um, not quite as bad as what you have in the ko book because you have a lot more units available to you to make up those deficiencies but it's still not the best choice uh, up next are arcanaut frigate which uh, you know has a very similar profile. Instead of like a six, it goes to a D six. Our ether shot carbines are half as many attacks. Um, same deal with sky cannons versus sky hook. You know your sky hook is definitely less powerful, so you're gonna want to go with sky cannon and be shooting shrapnel whenever you can. Um. Overall, this has a little bit of like a below average damage output. Um, it's a little bit disappointing there because uh, this is the one that's going to be more points efficient in terms of not really overloading yourself on shooting in Tempest's Eye. But 
um, you have a lot of variability here. You know, D6 attacks on the heavy sky cannon or D6 damage uh, for a shell um, really creates even more variability than you really want. So um, it's a little bit iffy. And then our gun, Grunstock Gun Hauler I also threw in here just for ha-has. It's basically just like a mobile cannon, but it definitely has some interesting abilities. Um, you know, it's a cheap unit that can always be threatening your opponent's objectives, basically no matter what. So if they leave an objective naked, you can just go grab it. Um, you have very similar damage profile, but... Um, unlike the other two, it's a little bit more efficient on points, coming up to 0.026 damage per point. Um, pretty solid, uh, but it can't carry any models inside of it, unlike the frigate and the ironclad. So, um, if you're taking it just strictly for shooting, there's probably better options out there, um, and... You know, I haven't included it here, but I'm sure some of your Iron Weld Arsenal stuff is going to be more efficient on points as well. So, where are our big winners? Uh, Sisters of the Watch are a really, like, far and away big winner here. Uh, Iron Drakes are also very solid, uh, as well as your Free Guild Crossbows. Um... You know, the advantages of the Sisters of the Watch and the Iron Drakes, you really don't need to uh, have a power pair with those. They're just good on their own. Uh, crossbows, you really need a Free Guild General to buff them up to get the maximum ability out of them. In terms of things that are good when they're moving... Um, you've got your Engine Riggers, Sky Wardens, and Dark Shards are really your big winners for when you're moving around. The big problem with um, you know our winners on power is that they need to be stationary to get maximum power. And without being stationary, their power goes down dramatically. So that ability to have that extra mobility in these units, it lets them get usually an extra turn of shooting in compared to your more powerful units. So over the course of the game, they may actually be uh, giving you better damage efficiency. Handgunners are also noteworthy because they have that stand and shoot ability. Um, I'll also throw in a, a bonus here with your Shadow Warriors, uh, being able to do the deep strike move uh, and... Uh, getting right on top of your opponent and shooting is also very strong. Handgunners are also pretty strong in terms of power level, and they don't necessarily need uh, to have a free guild general buffing them up. They're fairly decent on their own, so they definitely have some advantages there. And our big lo loser, Kurnoth Hunters, um, I am still looking for a reason to include any Sylvaneth whatsoever in a living city army. Uh, haven't figured it out yet, guys. Um, I don't think that it's a really good choice. It's a fun, fluffy choice, but if you're looking at power game, that's really not what you're going for there. So, what's very interesting, I think, is that our Endrin Riggers are really big winners when you're looking at the mobility game. You know, they're moving 12 inches and they fly. So they're able to threaten objectives, they're able to move around and shoot, they can stay out of trouble. They're uh, definitely a very versatile unit, and although they're not going to give you that peak performance of damage output, I think they're a really strong asset to be running in a Tempest Eye army. And even not in Tempest Eye, I mean, if you're running a 2,000 point list, you can run uh, a unit of 12 Endrin Riggers. So you can take them as allies. 12 of them is 400 points. So in a 2,000 point army, that just slots in nicely. So you can really use them in any of your cities uh, if you think that uh, mobile shooting is going to be a good asset for you. Plus, just rule of cool. Those guys are awesome. I love them. Um, and oddly enough, like the build with like the volley gun, the... Uh, Oh, what do you call it? The 
uh, light sky hook and the chain sword are uh, really your best um, option for shooting. And it also gives you that extra little bonus in melee of having four chain swords in the unit. So I like that a lot. So that is it for now, guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, and, of course, leave comments down below. Questions, I try and respond to everybody in some way. Um, you know, turn on your notifications. Ring the bell, so to speak, uh, to get alerts for our new videos. And if you are so inclined, we also have a Patreon linked down below. Uh 100% of our proceeds from Patreon go right back into improving the channel, buying new equipment, buying subscriptions to services to make it better. Um, just overall trying to give you guys a better experience. So if you're looking for even more out of us, uh, please consider contributing to our Patreon. And that is all for now. I will talk to you all later.